Hey everybody, I'm Hazel May and welcome to The Buzz. We get started with a father-son combo that bonded over games at the Old Garden. Bob Snow pens columns for NHL.com and after his time as a Red Sox beat writer, 25-year-old Chris became the director of hockey operations for the Wild. With Minnesota in town last Thursday, the Snows met up at their home away from home. That's where it all started. Yeah, yeah, my first memories of sports would be coming into the garden. I just remember being eight or ten years old and there was this enormous door and the first row was almost segregated in the sense that you would come in that door and it would lead you right to that first row and you know it was a struggle to get it open but once you got through it was, it was a lot of fun. I don't know how many times either, you know, you go home at night and turn on the 11 o'clock news and there'd be a penalty shot, a replay and then yep. show the camera coming down and you can see a little eight-year-old body, you know, coming out of the seats like you're, you know, you're just going to get your first gift of Christmas or whatever. Yep. That was always exciting to... Those seats, I think, were the beginning of the whole hockey bonding for Chris. I had always been a Bruins fan when I was a kid coming the old Boston Garden up in the corner. But I think coming to the Garden and sitting in the front row when you're a little kid, I guess you either make it or break it in terms of your hockey love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, to me, if, if you're going to develop a love for something, uh, how could you not in that, that venue? You know, Patrick Waugh. Right there, right in front uh, of you. Andy Moog, uh, yeah. whoever it may have been, you know, especially in the playoffs. And you know, I would go probably three or four games a year at that age. But they grew were, as the years went those by. Those were those were three or four of the best, you know, days of the year. Yeah. Well, I always wanted to eat more food, but I was afraid to ask because I spilled popcorn when I was I, about seven. I, I think I, I think I spent so the never, happy as tuition on spilled coke and popcorn on the front row because he'd say, "I want the coke and popcorn." <laughs> We'd buy it, and by the time he got through the third kernel, it was already spilled all over the place. He grew up watching Bobby Orr up top. And when he got these seats, it was when Kim Neely was coming in around 86. So just the, the power and the, you know, the beauty of what this game can be at a high speed, um, mm -hmm. he loved. And it was very easy for me to pick that up. Yeah. I think the reason that we appreciated that being in Sports Illustrated was because that became, if you will, I think the, the germination seat of everything that kind of came from that was mm -hmm. that one game. It was. And I, every time I see Andy Moog, I think of that picture. And you know, we'll yeah. see him in Dallas when we're on road games. And, one of these days, I've got to get him to sign yeah, that, that, that picture, picture to us because yeah. that's probably you know one of the, the best pictures we have to encapsulate you know what sports yeah. and what, what the relationship means to us. Yeah, we were in Providence in 2000, and I had a guy sit next to me and I introduced myself. We talked for an hour. I said, "Who are you with?" He said, "NHL.com." I said, "Really? We had been writing for some little sports publications at the time, and Chris was in Syracuse." Mm -hmm. And I said, "You know, what brings you here?" And he said, "We're thinking of expanding hockey onto the NHL website." I said, "Whoa, really?" Short conversation became a couple of packets, and before you knew it, when he was in Syracuse, he and I were the two father and son, if you will, but the tandem writers for college hockey on NHL.com. NHL.com has been a great bond. Well, we say hello and we say goodbye. Good to be back yeah, here. Good this, to be is, back. this is where all the Nesson prep came. That's right. All the Nesson prep started on MMTV, as we always say. The only reason he made it at Nesson is because he cut his teeth on MMTV in Melrose, Massachusetts. This is true. But in all honesty, it was, uh, you know, the training ground for, for Nesson. We really thought that at some point, he'd have a chance to step into management, not just quickly, but we thought the chance would come because of his remarkable evolution in the media in Minnesota and then in Boston. And I think it's just natural that some businesses look at what they're looking for down the road. And I think the Minnesota Wild saw in him something they have a plan for. And we would just, we hated to see him go. We're very sorry about that, but we were euphoric about the opportunity. And it's just, it's been a great experience for him to, to begin a, another career in sports management. That's why I'm pushing him to retire so he can come to some more there games. He's, he's too That's busy right. though, too many jobs, too many college hockey games to cover and brewing right. skates to make. That's right, we got skates to go before we sleep. Yep. Every parent wants their child to succeed and when you can see your kids go through the kind of evolution of career that Chris has done, you're really at the top of that as a parent. You always hope that other parents get that same experience. You, know, you really want parents to have that. So for me, both of my kids, my daughter teaches first grade, Chris is in, you know, in management with the Wild. I consider them to have use their education, use their experience to get into careers that they like. And I think when your kids do that, it makes, it makes life a lot, a lot more fun for parents, that's for sure. <laughs> Hey Bruins fans, this is The Buzz, I'm Hazel May. We've got a little bit of everything for you this week and that's a good way to describe number 10. The Inside Hockey Radio Show is hosted by James Murphy, Kevin Greenstein, and when he's not scouting for the Penguins, former All-Star Kevin Stevens. Their weekly guests read like a who's who of hockey and recently they let us inside. It's time to get inside hockey with your host, James Murphy, Kevin Greenstein, and former NHL star Kevin Stevens. This is your source for the best hockey analysis in North America. We started off as a website, InsideHockey.com, launched the site about four and a half, five years ago. 
and last year we started up the radio show here in Boston on 1510 The Zone. And welcome to another Ish the Inside Hockey Show. We thought that maybe Boston being a hockey town all this time needed a little uh, injection of hockey media, so to speak. We've got a very special guest now, the commissioner of the NHL, Gary Bettman. Commissioner, how are you today? I'm doing great, guys. It's good to be with you. We're fair with our interviews. We ask some difficult questions, but we never put the guests in a position where they're feeling really uncomfortable. Maybe there's a technology that could be used to put that chip inside the puck and have the goal line actually be recognizing when the puck does and doesn't cross the line. You have to remember, replay consists of a lot more than whether or not the puck crosses the line. I'd say Kevin Stevens and I are more the uh, the jokesters, and, and KG here keeps us real, uh, keeps things a little more organized than maybe we would keep it if not for him. So it, it's a good mix. I like it. We're on and have another special guest here today, Kev. Uh, Brad Park, former NHL defenseman. He's here in New York Rangers, Boston Bruins. He's sitting right here in studio with us. Brad, how are you? I'm great, guys. A lot of scouts listen to us, and that, that feels great when you know that, that real hockey people are listening to you. That's what matters most, and so when that happens, it's a lot easier to get those people to come on your show. We thought it was a great show, uh, the Be A Bruin show on Nesson in Boston. Were there any things that you were looking for on the ice that were a demonstration of a player's ability to be a part of a team? This was reality TV. Okay, sure. We gave these guys uh, six days in order to, go to win that opportunity to go to Bruins camp. Kevin Stevens is a guy who played not only on a line with Mario Lemieux, but also with Wayne Gretzky. He's got a very different insight into the game. Um, it's the insight of a scout, but it's also the insight of a player. I, I walked into Tampa out there around 4 o'clock, and all the fans are playing outside before the game. How do you beat that, you know? Soccer, we got an old friend of yours, current yeah. Boston Bruins center, Mark Savard. Mark, how are you today? Not bad. How are you guys doing? Not bad at all, Starkey. And you guys, of course, this is going to cause this is going to be a little extra. Five months with him today. <laughs> a little extra. Oh, this could be fun, huh? Savvy. What have been some of the differences, different things about Murray's style that you've noticed that you've sort of adapted to, so that you've been able to make the most of playing with him? Well, I think you know I got to carry the puck a bit more than I used to. Muzzle can just pretty much shoot it, and he, he works hard, and the offensive zone gets on the puck. <laughs> One thing that I've really enjoyed about covering the game, whether it's writing about it or whether it's doing the radio show here with Murph and Kevin, is that you just get this real sense that you're participating in something that, that's really special. The players are such good guys. Every interview you do, I mean, you really get a sense that they love the sport, that they really care. Who are some guys that maybe people aren't talking about right now that have stood out to you this season, uh, either in the East or the West? Uh, any, anybody that comes to mind for you? I enjoy the stories the most. You know, that's why I got into writing, was to, to listen to people's stories. And now to do it on, on the radio, too, is amazing. Uh, I, I just, it, it's unbelievable what some of these guys go through to see what they, they did to get to the level they're at. Or, you know, just all the people around the business are great. And there's a lot of comedy, there's a lot of drama. It, it's just, it's a great experience. You've been listening to another edition of the Inside Hockey Show. Coming in at number three, we've got something a little off the beaten path. Over the past few years, scores of internet hockey journalists have come out of the woodwork. Many are broadcasters, beat writers, former players, and the like. And then there's HockeyBuzz.com. I know, catchy name, right? When you want the latest trade rumors and league happenings, you go to Eklund. Always writing, always undercover. My name is Eklund, and I am the anonymous hockey blogger. The website currently gets around 5 million page views per month. It's really exciting. We have about 5,000 new people every day coming from North America to the site. What it has become uh, right now is uh, a pioneer type of site because, as you see, a lot of the newspapers, particularly in Canada, have uh, taken to doing the same thing. Uh, instead of waiting for their uh, print editions to come out the following day, uh, they are now making use of their websites for instant information. My site is really all about trying to write what is being discussed. Not necessarily, I mean, rumors, most things that, most things I'll write will never happen. Most, most things that are discussed by NHL GMs never come to fruition. So, but in my site you have an idea, of maybe you get a little bit of a hint of, of what is out there and what is being talked about. And, and that leads to great speculation and great talk. Hello. The whole rumor getting process is uh, is amazing, actually. Uh, emails helped a lot, of course, but I have about 350 to 400 contacts now. So I 
I actually top out my 6,000 minutes on my cell phone plan every month. We could also get into some of the um, Conroy to um, Ottawa rumors. Quite a few um, things that I've broken that I'm really proud of. Um, the Peter Forsberg signing in Philadelphia, I was the first to have that. And uh, that was a big deal, of course. Last year, the, um, the Hosa for Heatley trade. I know there's stuff going on with Tosca and the Baca. There have been probably, you know, about a dozen or so that I've been the first, absolutely first on, and then many others that I've been the first on speculating about. They don't seem willing to, to make too many changes. It's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, they really are slow on, the, slow on the trigger, you know? The media in general has been uh, okay with me. The Canadian media, media of course, because as an American, um, who sometimes beats them on a rumor scoop. I definitely have, uh, have gotten my share of letters <laughs> and emails from the Canadian media saying, leave this to the professionals. There's a lot, there's plenty to go on tonight for sure. That'll be great. During the lockout when I started this thing, it was, it was important for me to stay anonymous because I was uh, dealing with a lot of people who really wanted to protect themselves. And I found, uh, after that, I found it was just kind of a lot of fun to be anonymous. Well, he's kind of an ugly guy, you know. Uh, you know, he's poorly dressed. Uh, he stammers a lot, doesn't talk very well. There are people who, who communicate with him, who I promise they know who he is, if they were able to put two and two together. TC is Eklund. It allowed people to say things to him that he could write that maybe you wouldn't say to somebody that you knew. It was the anonymity of the whole thing that allowed people, I think, to be a little more forthright. Yeah, hello, Eklund. Nah, really? Wow, I, I, I can't see Blades getting moved. Char wants him out? Why? He's not forechecking. Uh, well, you know, it's not his job. He's a mascot. Keep me up on it, okay? Thanks, Mike. You just never know what you're gonna deal with, you know? It's a tough job. Hey, Bruins fans, welcome back to The Buzz. I'm Hazel May, your hockey hostess. We've got a great show for you. We'll kick off this week's countdown just as practically every Bruin home game has started since 1976. Classically trained anthem maestro Rene Rancourt has sung his way into the hearts of Bruins fans. His story is here at number 10. How much time do we have? Uh oh, five minutes. This is a big night because I'm celebrating today 30 years singing with the Boston Bruins. The way that I got into the Boston Garden was through Fenway Park. I met the organist, John Kiley. He said, would you like to sing for the Bruins? I said, where do they play? He said, Boston Garden. I said, where's that? If I'm not warmed up now, I never will be. One day I get a call from what was apparently, it sounded like a little old lady at the other end of the line, you know, and saying, uh, uh, Mr. Rancourt, I want you to know that I buy cable television just to hear you sing, and when you are through singing, I turn the channel. I said, you know, I've got to salute you. Said, that is the biggest compliment anyone has ever paid me. I said, from now on, I'm going to salute you. There's a pump. I don't mind admitting that I did steal that from Brandy Burridge. A star to make it five to four, Boston! The stump pump. We're just about the same size. Well, I guess he was a little bit wider, but... Stump pump. I stole it. I'm sorry I confess. Wow, we got the biggies tonight. Right, right wow. Good to see you, my friend. Impressed. I'm impressed. I'm walking on the street. There's always somebody that recognizes me, you know, like somebody from across the street will yell out, the, Oh, Canada. And I'll always sing back, Don't quit your day job. I love to sing. I've never had a contract. Uh, I kind of like that because uh, you're only as good as your last performance. A little check how sweet it is. I've been showing up for 30 years, now they can't get rid of me. Not that I need it. Once I did forget the words to the national anthem. The better you know the song, the more likely you are to forget the words. Because you don't, you think you don't have to concentrate, you know? That was the only time that I forgot the words. The next day, they wrote it up in the globe. Oh, Rene forgot the words to the national anthem. He dooby dooby dooed his way through the anthem just like Frank Sinatra, and he left the ice to a rousing ovation. This one's for you, <laughs> Hazel May. The buzz. Oh, the land of the three and the home of the brave. 
fact that I was able to meet so many people and to be many times looked upon as, you know, someone special uh, in, in my own little way, it, it's very, very touching that that happens and little kids, you know, recognizing you and the autographs and the, really the people that I have uh, come in contact with. That is really a privilege and uh, I, I think that is the most important to me. Hey Bruins fans, I'm Hazel May. The regular season is winding down, but we're still buzzing. This week's digits start in the quaint town of Cumberland, Rhode Island. Our super fan series continues with 20-year-old Alex Silva. He's Bruins to the core, and we joined him and his posse for game night on the tube at number 10. My emotions really depend on the Bruins. When they lose, I'm unbelievably angry all night. I mean, it's a, it's a bad thing to admit. I hate to admit it, but they really they drive my attitude. So when they win, you know, I feel great. He's a student of the game. He really gets into it, and that's one thing I enjoyed. Earlier this season, I was pretty excited. We had just scored a goal. I was jumping up and down on the couch, and it broke. My family wasn't very happy about that. He hates to miss a game. Yeah, these are some photos that I've taken. Uh, this is the special King Providence Krejci K with some cartoons. This is the puck that I caught at the game on February 10th. There's this video on YouTube that I've recently <laughs> seen. <laughs> and it's of him getting a puck in the stand. Oh, how'd you feel when we got that puck? Embarrassed. <laughs> Embarrassed when he stole the puck out of somebody else's hand. <laughs> oh, come on! Just by instinct, I jumped up, tried to catch it, it went over my head. So I jumped back and another guy and I were going at it at the same time and I came away with it, which was pretty cool. And I had like the most, the biggest rush of adrenaline in my life. You had no yeah. idea what you were getting yourself into. Live from Scotiabank Place in Ottawa, Ontario, New England Sports Network presents exclusive coverage of Boston Bruins hockey. Boston Chris Rooney, he's the one from New England. That's it. Phillips cross, I shot, scores! He oh, are you kidding? Oh, 55, <laughs> 55 seconds. 55 seconds. Last year, the Senators scored against us every game, like in the first minute. Come on, come on. They're gonna look for the perfect play now. Are they gonna score? It'd be pretty uh, funny if we gave up five on I don't know, the odds are against them. No, Bochensky's gonna score. But uh, I gotta feel they're gonna score. Goal in order to get the face off of the offense, so Joey's made a couple of mistakes here. First run, drive, score! Yes! Yeah! It's yeah! a yeah! goal of the Bulls. Yeah! 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 How's that pizza? Yeah. Would have been here by now. Where the hell have you been? We ordered an hour ago. All right, let's go. We're on a power play. Mowers taps it forward, redirects the yeah. 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 Peter Kalus gets his first NHL goal. I called it! it his first yeah. NHL goal! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is exciting. This is my mother. She's going to drop a bucket for our game. Go, Mrs. Silva! Next goal, next goal wins. Oh. Yes! Yeah, we win! <laughs> Sneaks it to Vermatti's in a row, the shot saved oh. by McDonald. They're shorthanded, trailing by one. They, uh, they put a forward on. The Boston Bruins came to town and came from behind twice to win tonight. All right, what a great win. Let's just watch him get the puck one more time. Oh, my um, God, again? Oh, not again. Oh, no, 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 no. Stewart, pass to Alberts. Alberts pass to Bergeron. Deflects off Curve over the glass. Got it! <laughs>